Welcome. You're listening to The Best of Investing. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-host, Mark Hoff of Pacific Private Money. Uh, Nam Phan is off today, and hopefully Patty Cohen will be joining us in uh, either this segment or the next one. Our phone number is 888-912-1190. Use that number to answer the trivia questions for a five-pack tanning certificate given away during the show. That certificate is not sponsored by the radio station, but by Tam Bella Tanning Salon. Two locations in San Francisco and one in Marin Tees. Trivia theme is uh, song lyrics. All right. Um, so, Mark, I, I was looking in the uh, good old Yahoo Finance uh, to get some of this information. San Francisco office vacancy is now at 17%, which is the highest since the Great Recession starting 2008. Is that right? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that, and that number is not likely to go the other direction anytime soon. Um, you know, a lot of things are a lot of realities are starting to come to the forefront here, you know, nine months into this, you know, and come March 15th, you know, this will be a one year since yeah. shelter in place since, uh, you know, and it wasn't, I'm just, I'm, I'm looking back on my calendar and I was, you know, and I went to several live events in January, February. Yeah. Uh, and then all of a sudden this thing just, you know, seemingly out of nowhere, although I know we had a little bit of warning and we had several weeks of, of warning leading up to it, but, you know, none of us thought it was going to go this long. And, you know, the, the longer people work from home and the longer that uh, tech companies and other big employers uh, 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 create, um, uh, incentivize their employees to, to work from home and create efficiencies. I mean, there's just, you know, technology platforms have grown and have, uh, have, stepped up to help businesses deal with uh with remote workers uh in a way that is way more effective and efficient than before it's it's scary to think of of what's going to happen to especially small businesses i mean you know google's going to be fine right uh you know all, all those companies the the big tech companies the ones that you know ipo'd and went up like crazy some of whom have even gone up in value even while all their workers and their their buildings are empty and their workers are at home like zoom <laughs> yeah right so but it's all the small businesses it's the restaurants it's the delis it's the small businesses that serve all those people that come into san francisco that go into uh, various uh, um, clusters in Silicon Valley and, you know, all over the Bay Area. I mean, even here in downtown Novato, where I'm talking, I'm here, here, I'm, I'm here in my office uh, in downtown Novato, you know, and up and down the street, uh, there are closed storefronts, many of whom won't, won't reopen again. So it's, yeah. you know, retail real estate. And of course, you know, we talk about real estate mostly here on The Best of Investing because, you uh, um, you know, we talk about real estate debt as an investment opportunity, and we talk about how well uh, on past shows, residential real estate, you know, the home industry, the home, the home uh, uh, market is doing great. Residential real estate is doing really, really well, yeah. uh, depending on what side you're on. If you're trying to buy, maybe you're a little bit frustrated right now. You know, mortgage rates are the lowest they've ever been and uh, uh, will continue to be low, uh, historically low for maybe years to come. You know, but once you get outside of residential real estate and you go into commercial, which is actually a huge component of the real estate industry overall, and a lot of people are invested in commercial REITs, and you know, it's just uh, it's it's scary and complicated, um, and it's hard to know. You know, will things go back to quote unquote normal uh, as some people hope, or uh, like? Others will, um, who like to scare you uh, with their headlines and prognostications, say sure. there is no more normal anymore. You know, uh, we're in the new normal. So I do have a couple of uh, comments on that I've been reading that kind of uh, fit into what you said. So Chairman yeah. Powell said that the Fed is far from moving on near zero interest rates. So backing up what you said about yeah. uh, keeping interest rates low. Uh, also, Pinterest uh, paid ninety million dollars to cancel their lease. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Isn't that crazy? And then yeah, they they leased almost an entire building. It may have been an entire building, new building in downtown San Francisco, and then they decided, eh, my bad, my <laughs> no longer, we no longer need it. Here's ninety million for a walkaway uh, fee yeah. to break the lease, yeah. and now right. that building is sitting there empty. And then uh, Oracle and HP Enterprise, which I guess is part of uh, HP, they're re relocating out of the Bay Area. Yeah. Now, and they said, uh, now, it's interesting. However, once a vaccine is rolled out, getting back to the office could be 
become a um, could become a competitive advantage in terms of business execution and retention. Hmm. So the idea theoretically is once the vaccine comes out uh, and it's widespread, uh, people are going to be looking. Well, here your your company is a good example. A lot of your uh, employees are working. Most of our employees are working remotely. Okay. However, if there was a vaccine or if we could, let's say, totally get rid of COVID, right? Yeah. Wouldn't it be more efficient to have people back in the office? Oh, I, yeah. I'm old school that way. I love people yeah. here. Plus the culture. It's just more fun. I, I think actually a lot of our employees are itching to get back in the office. Yeah. Um, but um, you're right. The, the vaccine is going to play a big role in it. You know, I'm really curious. I don't know. It's just hard to really, you know, all of our crystal balls are a little bit fuzzy, but you know, a year from now, we might be doing this show and, you know, we're all back to work. The virus is great. You know, we totally contained COVID. Hardly anybody's getting it anymore. Now we're just talking about the, the, the annual winter flu. You know, wow. wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and most of us aren't wearing masks anymore. I mean, you know, yeah. that could be, that could be, I, 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 have, I hope that's where we are a year from now. Yeah. I've been listening to, you know, as we all do, you know, lots of different podcasts and interviews with people, not necessarily the headline news because those guys are just paid to scare. Yeah. But, you know, there, there are a lot of really smart people whose opinions I respect who say that they predict that, you know, a year from now, you know, we'll be looking back going, God, remember last year when we thought it was going to be like this forever. Yeah. So uh, well, that, like as, you, as I say, you're mouth to con to you, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're going to cut to our first commercial break here. And yeah. we're talking about theme song lyrics. Uh, this is kind of a fun one. The end of the Civil War was near when quite accidentally a hero who sneezed abruptly seized a retreat and turned it into victory. What, what TV show does that, those lyrics come from? Oof. And, right. and I'll, I'll give you a hint. It was a, a show from the 60s, all right? <laughs> Uh, call Which we're old enough to remember. That's right. Call 888-912-1190 to answer this question. Uh, the end of the Civil War was near, and quite accidentally, a hero who sneezed abruptly seized a retreat and turned it into victory. Right? What TV show does Sounds that really on? familiar, actually. All right. Uh, well, as soon as you get that, I tell you the answer. Okay, stay with us. You're listening to Best of Investing. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Best of Investing. Edward Brown here along with Mark Hahn of Pacific Private Money. Not sure where Patty is. Hoping uh, she'll pop in here pretty soon. But here was our first trivia question on song lyrics. Uh, the end of the Civil War was near when quite accidentally a hero who sneezed abruptly seized a retreat and turned it into victory. I forget. I don't know what that was. A F Troop. Oh, F Troop. Remember that? <laughs> right. Oh, my God. You know, I don't think I would have remembered that. Uh, with Larry me, uh, Storch and uh, Sundays to remember that. And one. Barry. Wow. That was it. <laughs> F Troop. Yeah. After, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, you have some headlines you want to share with us? Yeah, you know, it's um, so you know we talked a little bit about commercial real estate in the last segment, and uh, and also mentioned I, I said how well residential real estate's been doing, and anyone listening to this show over the last six months has pretty much heard us say that. Whereas six months ago we were kind of surprised. It's like, <laughs> whoa, whoa, residential real estate is resilient and yeah. uh, it's not going down. It's not going down 30% in value like a lot of my, uh, uh, many of my um, associates were, were predicting or, or, yeah. or maybe hoping because they were hoping that real estate would go on sale again. But uh, so, you know, this week's headlines really are just more of the same. And I, you know, and I'm, I'm looking at like Inman News and Redfin and Housing Wire, but uh, uh, Redfin News, uh, they've got a news consolidation service that is, that I really like. Uh, they really have, you know, pretty much, if you want to know how the real estate market's doing, you know, go to Redfin News on their housing market and just the top uh, three uh, from this week, reflecting what's happened in December. So these are pretty recent results. So uh, uh, and this is headlines from January 14th. 63% of 2020 home buyers made an offer sight unseen. Amazing. On a home, shattering previous records. Uh, the next headline, home prices rose 13% in December and sales are up 16%. Well, that 13%, of course, that's the median price. And this is nationwide. Na national median home prices rose 13% year over year, which is telling you that um, uh, more homes are selling at the higher end. When median home prices go up, it doesn't mean that your house went up in value 13%. It just means that the median price of a home that's selling is 13% higher uh, in, in value because uh, we're all looking for, you know, if, 
fewer condos are being sold and more single family homes are being sold and more single family homes are selling in suburbs that are priced higher than, than they are in, in, in certain cities. And then the third headline uh, survey, 60% of home buyers believe the housing market will fare better in 2021 than in 2020. Really? So again, and that's really, really important because, you know, there's always the predictions. What will, what will housing prices do in 2021? As if there's some, you know, magic, uh, invisible power that, you know, <laughs> you know, manipulates which direction housing prices are going to go. And really at the end of the day, sometimes it's as simple and unscientific as consumer confidence, right? That's why the consumer confidence index is actually a really important and key component to, uh, and politicians, of course, they want to, they, you know, they're, they're, they're all over that one. You know, how, how's the consumer, how, how's the confidence rating this year? So when 60% of uh, home buyers surveyed uh, say they, they believe that real estate and the housing market will fare better uh, this year than, than last year, and last year was pretty darn good. That, that tells you something. So, uh, you know, so the bubble boys out there that, uh, you know, still a year later are hoping real estate prices are going to go down or, or because of foreclosures, there's going to be another correction. Um, uh, not a whole lot of support for that belief. And for people like, you know, Edward, like you and I, uh, and Pacific Private Money, where we make uh, short-term real estate loans and we use other people's money, our client capital to make those loans and provide uh, extra high returns or above market returns. You know, we're, we're, uh, you know, we're very, very uh, concerned and on top of, uh, you know, the direction of the real estate market, the direction of yeah. consumer sentiment, uh, what's likely to happen with interest rates and what does that uh, foretell for the residential housing market, particularly here in California, since that's really where we, we specialize in mostly California residential real estate and financing of those transactions uh, and uh, putting our client money to work in real estate secured debt. And of course, we're big proponents of real estate secured debt as an investment strategy for those people who are sitting on, maybe you've got profits you've taken from your Bitcoin, uh, <laughs> you've got profits you've taken from real estate you've sold, maybe you're sitting on cash from, uh, from stock, maybe you sold some of that Tesla or Amazon and wondering what to do with it next. Real estate debt, with real estate debt, you can earn between easily between seven and 10% uh, annual and you've got collateral and security and it's designed to be consistent. Uh, whereas, you know, the one thing I don't know about 2021, in fact, I didn't know about 2020. And I mean, if you'd asked me what the stock market was going to do in 2020, and I think we talked about that a little yeah. bit last year at the beginning, I thought it was going to underperform. I really thought the stock market was going to be flat for 2020 and that was before COVID. And then after COVID, I sure as uh, heck thought it was going to be flat. And then look what it did. It went nuts, uh, thanks to uh, many of the companies that uh, grew in value because of, uh, uh, during, because of COVID. Um, so will, will we see the same type of year-over-year -year performance in the S&P and, and the Dow Jones? Heck if I know. I'm the last person you should ask. Uh, but, um, you, know, I'm, you know, I'm not buying stock right now because I, I, I am guessing if I had to be a betting man that it is going to underperform. But I'm confident that real estate debt will continue to provide, you know, the the expected yields that we uh, um, yeah. have projected. Which uh, again, depending on uh, what flavor of real estate debt you're uh, you're willing to uh, you, you're willing to invest in, and and what your risk capacity is. I mean, we have four different funds at Pacific Private Money. They're all real estate debt secured, and they're paying between seven percent and twelve percent. So pretty nice little comfortable range. Uh, but they each have their own uh, unique uh, features, and we'll go over some of those uh, in yeah. this show today. Well, and it's interesting, too, because being a debt fund, it's actually more conservative than owning the real estate because you're into it for, you know, 60 cents on the dollar, 65 cents on the dollar. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, and it's funny. So many people don't realize that there are multiple ways to invest in real estate other than buying it, right? 
buying real estate, everybody knows, oh, you know, buy a rental property or buy, you know, small multifamily duplex, fourplex or, or uh, you know, or even a commercial or industrial property. Um, but then there's REITs that you can invest in. And again, some REITs are doing okay. Some are, some are in, in trouble this year. But also, owning, in commercial property. Owning, well, owning real estate can be very challenging, especially now if you have, you know, if you have an office building and it's vacant. Yeah. Or if you have residential property and the tenants aren't paying, you know, it's a little challenging. I'd rather just be the, uh, be the bank. Be so the bank, right. And being the bank is the third way. You know, it's, it's not a REIT. It's not owning real estate, but you're investing in, in, in real estate uh, secured debt, uh, which, has, uh, which has collateral, it has insurance, it has all kinds of things. So we'll get more into that later. Get more into that next one. Okay. Here's our uh, second trivia. This one's a little easier. Second trivia question on um, uh, so theme, TV theme, song, lyrics. The weather started getting rough. The tiny ship was tossed. <laughs> yeah. I had to figure out a softball question in there for you. Uh, um, the first caller with the correct answer is going to win that tanning certificate. Uh, call 888-912-1190. Don't touch that dial because the best of investing is going to be right back. Welcome back to the Best of Investing. Edward Brown here along with Mark Hahn of Pacific Private Money. Patty will be joining us a little bit later in the show. Uh, second trivia question. The weather started getting rough. The tiny ship was tossed. What song is that uh, TV show? Gilligan's Island. Gilligan's Island. Very good. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So, Mark, you are president of Pacific Private Money. You provide mortgage investments that are currently yielding somewhere between 7 to 12%. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give us a quick little rundown? Yeah, so, so, so essentially what we do at Pacific Private Money is we make short-term real estate loans, also referred to as bridge loans. Sometimes they're referred to as hard money loans or private money loans. We tend to call ourselves alternative real estate finance lenders. Uh, but bridge loans is probably the one that most closely describes what we do at Pacific Private Money. The majority of loans we make are for people who uh, need money quickly uh, either money uh, cash out on, on equity and real estate they own, uh, but probably 60 to 70 percent of the loans we do are purchase loans and they're purchase of a, of a residence or rental property that uh, uh, they, and they can't get bank financing for it for one reason or another or they can't get bank, bank financing fast enough because as you know in California, uh, we have not been building homes at a rate uh, to meet demand and so we've got an inventory issue. And so for those people who want to move and are looking to move into certain neighborhoods, they're usually having to compete. And so uh, a lot of people come to us because they want to, you know, they want a fast, easy to qualify for a bridge loan that they can use to purchase a property, uh, maybe compete with cash buyers, uh, make an all cash or uh, make a cash like offer. There's just a, a, there's a lot of reasons why people use bridge financing or, or, or short-term financing. And, and, uh, um, and, you know, we've been servicing, we've been serving that, that marketplace now since 2008. And in return for being fast, friendly, reliable, uh, low document, uh, and we're able to very, very quickly analyze the scenario, the situation, and make a decision as to whether we think that's a safe loan to make uh, or not, we charge more than the banks do. So uh, we're not quite as expensive as hard money used to be 20 years ago, but you know, we're still in the eight to 9% range. Uh, and uh, when you charge eight to 9% in a couple of points uh, and you're doing it from a fund uh, where you have investors investing in that fund, you can produce some pretty nice yields for your investors. Yep. So our, our legacy fund is the Pacific private money fund. That's the fund we've had since 2013. And that's one of four funds that we we manage and offer, uh, but that one is just a purely, it just makes short-term loans. Uh, I mean, there's some, there's a few construction loans in there and a few small commercial loans, but generally speaking, the loans that we make in that fund turn over fairly quickly. And since we charge between eight and 9%, we're able to produ produce a yield to our investors of around seven and a half percent right now. Um, the other three funds we have are, uh, are, are each uh, a little bit more unique and more focused. We have a fund we call Freedom Fund that produces a return of, uh, of a flat 7%. There's, it doesn't go up or down. We just pay 7% uh, for the use of our investors' capital. 
And we use that money in that fund, which is about 14 million uh, in assets under management right now. We use that fund just to uh, close loans that we're going to sell to a third party. We have a number of third party vendors that buy loans from Pacific private money, but they have to be closed first. So we use that freedom fund like a warehouse line. Uh, and we've got, like I said, we've got about 14 million in there. We're growing that to about 25 million, which we think for, for this year, we'll probably meet our needs for um, capital to close loans that we're going to sell outside the portfolio. And again, we pay 7% for the use of their money. And there's no lockup on that fund. That's another unique feature of the Freedom Fund is that, and that's what we call it, the Freedom Fund. You're free to invest your money like in a money market account and pull it out whenever you need it. Uh, and we ask for a minimum investment in that one of about $250,000. So we don't have a lot of small investors. We'd rather have fewer larger investors in that fund. Well, I tell you what, you want, if you want to hear a, a deal of the week, and you'll, you might have one too, but uh, I've got one myself here, where there is an older person who is still working, but unfortunately because of COVID, uh, a lot of the income had dried up. Mm -hmm. While it dried up, this person was unable to make their mortgage payment for a few months and the bank is foreclosing on the house. And this person still has a fair amount of equity in the house. Mm -hmm. This person could normally qualify for a reverse mortgage, which would solve all the problems. Right, sure. However, because there's been a notice of default filed and they're in foreclosure, uh, this person cannot qualify for a reverse mortgage. The law says that they cannot get a reverse mortgage if they are in default. So we are going to go ahead and make this person a 60% loan to value. Mm -hmm. And then probably within a few months, this person will apply for a reverse mortgage and all will be good. This person won't have to make any mortgage payments anymore. And uh, it's, it seems like the perfect solution. So this is yeah, a, a situation where it was like, you know, it's a fairly conservative uh, deal because it's 60% loan to value. Uh, this person doesn't even really have to qualify uh, for a loan because uh, reverse mortgage, they automatically qualify because they're, of, uh, you know, 75 years old. It's funny because people will say me, tell me, ask me all the time, how do people even know about you? How does someone who's in a situation like that know to call you? And the answer is they actually don't. It's the realtors for the most part. Yes, and in this case, it was a referral from a mortgage broker. Yeah, mortgage so brokers and realtors is where we get almost all of our deal flow from because they have a client, the client gets into a situation and there's a they either need money or there's a transaction they're trying to close and a sharp realtor, a smart realtor, and we work with a lot of smart realtors, yep. knows that um, you know a bridge loan is an opportunity. Their challenge is to sell it to their client and make their client understand that, hey, this is just an option for you. It's a tool. And it, yes, it's more expensive than bank financing, but um, would you pay more for the house if you knew you absolutely could get it? I mean, that's basically yep. how you need to look at it. It's uh, uh, you're, you're basically paying for the insurance of knowing you can actually get that house you want or close a transaction that you're already in contract with and you're, you stand to lose your deposit of 50 or hundred thousand dollars. We've saved a lot. We've rescued a lot of deals that looked like they were going to fall apart and the seller was going to get to keep the deposit and go sell it to somebody else. Yeah. So it's just, there's lots and lots of situations. Uh, I mentioned there's four funds. I talked about two, the other two, uh, one's a construction loan fund. We call that our North star fund and a North star fund, uh, funds construction of mostly residential real estate in California. Last but not least, the Southwest Fund uh, is a little bit unique. It invests in seller carryback loans in the state of Texas. Which we're going to get into uh, when we come back. We just nice. got to go to a quick break. Uh, again, hoping Patty will join us uh, pretty soon here before we have to cut out completely. All right, third trivia question. Uh, we're talking song lyrics, TV theme, or <laughs> whatever. Okay. Where are those good old-fashioned values on which we used to rely? So that is a, uh, a theme from yeah. which TV show? All right, stay with us. The Best of Investing will be right back. Damn. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to The Best of Investing. Edward Brown here along with Mark Cohn and Patty, jo Patty Cohen uh, joined us finally. So here's our third yeah. trivia question. Uh, what TV show does this come from? Uh, where are those good old fashioned values on which we used to rely? Mark. Family guy. Family guy. That is correct. Okay. So Patty, uh, come on. You joined us. You just joined us on the show 
and you got some excellent stuff to tell us about what's going on with Compass. Yeah, I mean, I was actually on the phone from 1230 to 3 on a Compass kind of kickoff. It, there was no mention of, of that, so I can't even speak to it. But I think one thing that would be really beneficial for people to know, and it's, it's a way that Pacific Private Money and Compass can partner, is okay. that we do, we have a bridge loan program. And what's great about, like, everybody who's ever sold a house that is moving up, um, instead of, like, cashing out, they are always stuck with the question of, I have to sell my house first. What if I find my dream house? Will the seller take a contingent offer? Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in this business 32 years, and even in a buyer's market, it's usually the answer is no. Yeah. And, it's, you know, at least in the Bay Area, in, like, different places yes but the answer is no so people go well how do you do that and you know we can we can sometimes negotiate a rent back but what really works for people is a bridge loan and a lot of times they say you know i can't qualify for a bridge loan or oh the interest rate is higher whatever but compass has a solution to that and that is that compass will pay the bridge now of course specific private money does bridge loans and they save the day and they can do them quickly um so pacific private i mean a compass will pay the interest rate on the bridge loan mm -hmm. and when the house is sold the seller will rent will repay that interest okay. from their proceeds and what is great about that also is, and you two can both speak to this, is that you have to be able to qualify. So without those rate, you know, you could talk about ratios and I don't know if the consumer understands ratios, but ratio, it's all about ratios when you're qualifying. And usually in a bridge loan, that interest rate that they're paying has to be factored in. Well, it doesn't have to be factored in if they're not having to pay it during that bridge loan period. Oh, good point. Yeah, that helps a lot because a lot of people just cannot qualify. Sure. So that is really powerful for people because it's a, it's a faster market than ever, um, which is the good news. But if you're a seller that has to buy, it means that the house you want is going to be in demand. And, and in fact, they're competing with cash buyers and, and you might, yeah. this might be a moot point. But it also means that your house is going to sell faster than ever. So you don't even have time to shop. So right. it's just a rapid fire market. So if, if as a consumer, if you can lock up and set up that bridge loan in advance, then we pull the trigger on selling your house. It sells in a hot New York minute and the bridge loan is in place. You find your perfect house and you can execute on that. Yeah. It's so really, it's really powerful. It's a, it's a dilemma that so many consumers have. Yeah, right. Exactly. So what Patty's talking about is, is, basically Compass's buy before sell program. And it's something that they've been advertising to uh, their, you know, realtor base uh, and also to the public. Uh, they had taken out half page ads or full page ads in local papers to talk about buy before sell. And what's interesting is if that's kind of a new sales pitch, it's a new concept that I still, I think, I think a lot of home buyers still don't quite get. They may have seen the ad and go buy before sell. Okay, well, whatever, you know, what does that mean? Well, and, and, and especially if they're not thinking of moving, but then all of a sudden they're going, okay, well, now we want to move. Let's just call Fred at the bank and see if we can get a uh, a loan uh, on our, you know, on our equity, or if we can buy our next home because hey, we got a down payment. We don't owe a whole bunch of money on our house. Maybe we can just buy the next house outright, move right into it and sell the home we're in now, you know, cause you know, who wants to sell first, move, then buy later. Um, they want to, you know, buy now, buy their next home now and move right into it. Well, when they call their banker, their friendly banker, who's been taking good care of them for years and they ask them, Hey, uh, I want to, uh, I've got a down payment, uh, but we're living in our home now. We have a small loan on it. Um, we want to, uh, I need a loan to buy the next house. They go more often than not, uh, I'm sorry, but we can't make you a new home loan when you have another home loan. You don't qualify to have two mortgages at the same time. Uh -huh. it's just, and that just makes head, people's heads explode because, you know, I mean, Dodd-Frank is still only, it's still less than 10 years old. A lot of people don't understand, you know, 
ratios and debt service uh, ability to repay and, and how all this other stuff is calculated. And, and they discover, what do you mean I don't qualify to have? I make plenty of money and, and I've got the down payment. What do you mean I don't qualify to have a second mortgage? Well, that's, that's exactly what it is. And so, so, you have, so you have people who are in their home that feel like they're stuck. Well, I don't want to move twice. My wife refuses. Uh, there's COVID going on. We don't want to, we don't want to rent. We can't even find a place to rent. So yeah. how do we buy our next home? They think, well, we can't. So you have boomers sitting in their home for years longer than they used to when they want to move up or down or somewhere else. And, uh, and they don't know that there's this tool. And so Compass has this amazing uh, uh, relationships with companies like ours and better.com and Freedom uh, uh, Lending and others that will help uh, either loan you your equity in your existing home or provide financing that will allow you to buy the next home and move right into it. Uh, and it's short-term financing and there's ways to take care of the payments so that you don't have to make the payments until you sell uh, your existing home. So it's really, it's really good news and it's really convenient. It's uh, easy to qualify for. and It's really helpful to help people get into their next home. And Patty, how do people get a hold of you if you have more questions about this uh, program you have? Yeah, it's my name is Patty Cohn, and at, um, email is p a t t i patty dot cohn c o h n at compass dot com, and my phone number is four one five seven two two. 4842. Okay. So the caveats on this program is it must be listed with a Compass agent, yeah, well. obviously. <laughs> so anywhere in the Bay Area, I can work. And if it's outside of Marin County, I will co-list it. Um, so you get two agents for the price of one. Mm -hmm. And the other thing to know, and most Compass agents don't know that, and then certainly the general public doesn't know this, is that you don't, you can use any lender that you want. It, you know, Compass is, a, is um, in this program, they're kind of affiliated with a couple of different lenders, but they can use Pacific Private Money or anybody. So I'm telling you right now, like most Compass agents don't know that. And the general well, public there doesn't know that. many lenders that, uh, other than Pacific Private Money. There's a few, but they're not that many around. No, there are not that Pacific many. Private Money is a good one. Uh, Mark, how do people get a hold of you about either investing in some of the funds or participating in this kind of a uh, Bridge loan product. The best way to learn about uh, bridge loans or uh, investment vehicles is to go to PacificPrivateMoney.com. That's our website, PacificPrivateMoney.com. And from there, uh, you can explore and look at uh, loan options or investment options. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> As he's taking a sip. As I'm taking a sip of water. <laughs> Good, for perfect timing. You did that just on purpose. I know. I know you did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have about just uh, 20 seconds. Um, when we come back, uh, we'll talk a little bit uh, more about uh, real estate. We actually have uh, an email that comes in for each of you. Uh, yeah. I want to go over. Okay. So uh, stay tuned, audience. The Best of Investing. I'll be right back. Welcome back to The Best of Investing. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Mark Hoff of Pacific Private Money and Patty Cohn of Compass Realty. Patty, an email comes in from a listener and says, uh, what's the real estate outlook for the Bay Area under a new presidency? That is always the question, and that's a great question. And in fact, I spent two and a half hours today on a, a call with over a thousand people, agents on it, mm -hmm. through Compass, talking about part of it was, a lot of it was about that. Um, so some predictions are like best case scenario, 7% appreciation, probably more like 4 to 5%. Okay. Um, so, and people are wondering about, well, what about all these um, foreclosures that are supposed to come because people are losing their jobs? That hasn't happened. It isn't happening yet, but what will probably happen, like, first of all, we're at the um, lowest point for inventory, which is basically listings. Yes. Listings has not been this low in 16 years. And this is all Bay Area. Nation, we won't even talk about nationwide, just Bay Area. It's been 16 years. So... What will happen as we get toward the last half of the year is that we're gonna see more and more inventory. It'll still be a seller's market, but we'll see more and more. Now, as for um, foreclosures, we'll see some of those too, but not many. And it's very, very different than um, 2008, 2009, because people have more skin in the game. They're not using their house like an ATM. They're um, 38.4% are first-time buyers, and they're putting more down. So 
it, it's just because of historically low interest rates and even though prices are high, they, they're, they're in the game. So we ha are starting out of the gate like on fire, continuing, very little seasonality anymore, and that has been a trend anyway. But since COVID, there's no seasonality. And for, for people out there that don't quite understand what I mean, it, you know, it basically means most people think like all the houses are sold in the spring. Well, not really. We have a second selling season. And when is a good time to put your house on the market? Right now. <laughs> yeah, you know, today. it's always right now. <laughs> yeah, today. So, so uh, has a new presidency come up with any kind of uh, uh, laws or suggestions as to that would impact the real estate market that you can see? Um, no, oh, yeah. not that, not that we're. So, are you, so are you saying like, oh, so, so we have a Democrat regime taking over and a Democrat controlled House and Senate? Um, yeah, how might that impact? you know, real estate in terms exactly. of you know, investment real estate, depreciation. Um, yeah, stuff like that. Exactly. Is there capital gains? Are they going to muck around with capital gains tax rates? What? I would say, um, you know, if we were guessing that, that's, that's likely. They're probably going to look to raise taxes, particularly on the, quote, wealthy, which yeah. really they're talking anybody over 400,000. And uh, let's, you know, let's, let's be honest. If you live in California or New York, Four hundred thousand dollars is middle class, little middle class lifestyle. So yeah. I'm hoping that uh, maybe the uh, the remaining Republicans in the Senate and Congress can say, "Hey, can we increase that a little bit? You know, maybe anybody making a million dollars or more, uh, yeah. let's uh, let's go out and and rake them over with new taxes." The first thing I want to see is Congress make a law that the first thing they do is cut their pays in half. Yeah, <laughs> the first time are rich, they don't need the money to begin with. Yeah. yeah. Well, that sounds exciting. So was that really, a, so the, the Compass uh, general meeting today, that sounded like it was pretty informative and, and bullish, uh, you know, start the year. It's, there's a lot to be, um, uh, a lot to be, uh, look forward to this year in residential real estate. It looks like it's going to be a banner year, 2021. Yeah. 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 It's, okay. it's amazing. Uh, Patty, give out your information one more time, please. Yeah, I'm with, um, I'm Patty Cohen. I've been in the business 32 years, residential real estate in the Bay area. I'm, uh, patty.cohn, that's P-A-T-T-I dot C-O-H-N at compass.com, 415-722-4842. And Mark, uh, give out your information. Pacificprivatemoney.com and call us, 415-883-2150, 415-883-2150. All right, we're going to cut out. Uh, here's our thoughts for the day. He who laughs last didn't get the joke. <laughs> and uh, and see, you laughed right, right away, so you got it. Got okay. it. And <laughs> when you're alone, if you feel lonely, obviously you're in bad company. Yeah, That's not good. Exactly. Okay. Tune in next week to the best of investing. We'll be giving away more free prizes for answering trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm Edward Brown, wishing you the best of investing. So long.